I'm often asked about who my who my heroes are, you know, favorite writers, um, musicians, um, people like that. And it finally dawned on me that I do have one, because you often forget to name them all. So this is a poem I wrote about that. It's called My Actual Hero. I'm often asked who my heroes are, and I line up a list of names. I never get through all the ones that I should, and it's different every time. But I try to include a few obvious ones. Bob Dylan, Brian Wilson, Neil Young. And I try to mention a few lesser known names. They shouldn't be lesser known if you're asking me, which is exactly what's happening. Bob James, John Waters, Janet Malcolm. But there are so many problems with lists. Number one, they can never be definitive. And secondly, they can start to go on and on and lose the reader. The other thing, and this is off list now, is that lists are sometimes more than what you need. The simple truth for me is, I have one hero. And I have never mentioned her because I don't know her name. So as important as Steve Martin was when I was growing up, and Wes Craven, and Stephen King, and Suzanne Vega, and Larry Bird, and Steve Gadd, and Robert Cray, and about 200 other names, oh, and my friends and family too, of course, the greatest thing I ever saw was when some visitors up at my family home were leaving in a rental car, and it broke down in the driveway. They'd barely made it to turning around when smoke billowed, and the steering wheel locked. My dad used to sell cars, so he decided that meant he could have a good look under the hood. And besides, he was probably thinking if he confirmed the death of this one, they might leave his yard driving a brand new vehicle. Old habits die hard, old cars too. The guy no longer driving the rental car got out and kicked at a tyre, pretended he was a man that knew about these things, and scratched his head as if the diagnosis was about to come to him. His wife didn't even remove her seatbelt, she just stayed put, reaching into the glove compartment where she took a large book and turned to her place, put her head down and carried on with her reading. Not for her, the awkward smiling of a here we go again, hello, so quickly after that goodbye. Not for her to pretend she knew the first thing about cars or billowing smoke or any of the nonsense that was stopping her from getting to wherever point B was meant to be. She was stuck for that moment at point A, and the car had failed in its simplest of duties. But she had her book, so she started to read. Since she hadn't been driving and wasn't a mechanic and didn't have an alternative me method of transportation, she was just going to sit in that car and read while a tow truck or a taxi turned up to fix whatever was wrong. I got the feeling that as far as she was concerned, there was more right with the situation than wrong. When you're meeting someone for the first time, you cannot take out a book and read. It's considered quite rude. And when you're driving, it's dangerous to read. It's certainly never recommended. Even in the passenger seat, there's a motion sickness that creeps in if you're turning pages while wheels are turning. So she had found a perfect window, even though it remained rolled up tight. She had said her lo hellos and then her goodbyes. She had not been rude. And now, since she was never going to add anything to the current situation and was only ever going to be a minus, she sat and caught up with her reading material. She was my hero in that moment and every day since. I've never met her again, don't remember her name, couldn't tell you one other thing about her. Oh, apart from the fact that she used to be a spy, some sort of assassin level government agent, I believe. So that's rather interesting, right? But anyway, I now take a book with me wherever I go.